Hi, this is Eric for Ochoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with procedural textures in Octane for Maya. And for this video, I'm using the machinery underscore O2.MA scene. And it consists of this sort of mechanical looking communications tower on a flat plane. So just a nice little piece of geometry to play with a little bit while we explore these types of textures. So let's open up Hypershade. And you'll see here in the Create Render Node area, if I go down to Octane Textures and click on Procedural, these are all the procedural textures. So we have Checkerboard, Marble, Noise, Rigid Fractal, Saw Wave, Sine Wave, Triangle Wave, and Turbulence. And essentially they all work on mathematical algorithms in order to create uh, variations of light and dark colors, which then you can apply to your surfaces. The great thing about procedural textures is they require less memory than image textures. You can also use them as a way to augment image textures, add a little bit more visual interest to them. So what I'm going to do is let's take a look at our surface here. I'm going to select this piece right here and let's just apply a simple glossy shader to it. So I clicked on that green icon there and let's zoom in here on our glossy shader. Actually what I'm going to do is let's move this off to the side and open up the attribute editor. While we have that selected, we can go over to the glossy material tab. And the easiest way to see how these textures work is to put them into the diffuse channel. So I'll click on the checkerboard next to diffuse and let's go to octane textures and find procedural. And let's take a look at the marble texture. So I'll click on marble texture. And when I apply it, we don't see a whole lot of a change here. We just see kind of some stripes here on the surface. So that's kind of underwhelming. Well, part of the problem is, is that th this scene is very large and we need to scale up our procedural texture so that uh, we can see the detail in it a little bit better. So how can we do that? Well, we can go to the attribute editor and find scale down here. Click on this checkerboard icon, which opens up the create render node window to the octane transform section. I'll keep things simple by going to Octane Scale Transform. So click on that, and that gives us a vector value. So let's just type in 100 into each one of these fields. Now we're starting to see a little bit more detail. That's looking a bit better. Let's go back to our marble texture. Uh, most of the settings here are fairly straightforward. We have power, which is like an overall brightness control. You can, of course, also put a texture into power. Uh, we have offset, which changes the position of the uh, procedural texture on the surface. Again, anytime you see one of these fields with a checkerboard icon on it, you can put a texture in there so that you can layer textures. We have octaves, which can increase or reduce detail, depending on how many octaves you have. And then the Omega, if we play with this, we can kind of see the results. How it shifts the colors and the intensity and the contrast. And then of course, variance if we want low variance, like a simple, simple texture there or high variance. We can put some textures in there as well. We'll talk about different projection types in a later video in this section. But let's see what happens when we actually put another texture into power. So I'm gonna click on this checkerboard icon right here pull up Octane Textures under Procedural. Let's see what happens when I put in, say, a noise texture. The noise is gonna be similar to uh, marble. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is maybe add something to adjust the scale. So I'm gonna click on the checkerboard icon next to Transform. And again, I'm gonna use that Octane Scale Transform. And let's set this to, say, something like 200 by 200 by 200. And so you can see now we have sort of an underlying detail beneath that marble texture because we're adjusting the power of the marble texture using this noise texture. So that's kind of a fun thing to experiment with. And we can see that we have different noise types. So we can choose turbulence, we can choose circular or chips. They're all just essentially different algorithms. The chips looks kind of cool, kind of like a scale scaly type uh, procedural texture. And then we can adjust the omega 
likewise. So a lot of times when you're working with procedural textures, you can kind of just adjust these sliders until you kind of uh, get the visual uh, effect that you're going for. And of course, we can also invert it. And with the noise texture, we also have contrast as well as gamma. So I've reloaded the same scene here just to get rid of some of those textures. I'm going to select this piece right here. And from the Octane shelf, I'm going to click on this third button over to create a specular material. Let's go to the attribute editor for that specular material. I'm going to bring the transmission up and set index to one. So it's almost completely transparent and we can play with the roughness a little bit. So if I bring the roughness up, we're going to get kind of a translucent kind of quality to it. So let's try putting a procedural texture into the roughness channel. So I'll click on this checkerboard icon next to roughness and go to Octane Textures, Procedural. Let's try the noise texture again. And I'm going to set this to, let's try a circular. Let's click next to transform. I'll choose scale. And let's set this to 50 by 50 by 50. So this way we could just add just a little bit of detail there to make it slightly more interesting than just a straight up roughness. Um, and then we can start to play with say the omega, the number of octaves, contrast. You can see you can actually kind of So you can start to get kind of sort of speckled kind of quality there. Which is kind of interesting. So a lot of interesting effects you can come up with with procedural textures. Uh, some other ones we can try. Uh, let's break this connection for roughness. And instead this time, let's do procedural sine wave. So saw, sine wave, and triangular are very similar in that they produce kind of a striated line. So you can see this is the result. I'm going to add a scale transform. Let's set this to 10 by 10 by 10. So you can see it's like repeating this gradient over and over again. And I can shift it using this offset slider right here. So it's a fairly simple texture, but it's nice for creating kind of repeating ridges. So this might be good for creating like ripples in water or maybe in a sand dune or something like that. And again, much lower overhead in terms of memory than say using an image texture. That's the basics of working with procedural textures in Octane for Maya.